All right, today we're going to talk about tube fishing um, and not your typical jig head, small mouth type tube situation, but uh, flipping a tube. Still probably a mixture of small mouth and large mouth. I mean, I do this a lot for both species. I'm going to just talk about some of the ways that you can up your hookup percentage because tubes are notorious for losing fish, getting bites and losing them. But they're so effective. I mean, the fish bite them, so we have to keep doing it. So I figured out a couple ways to do this and started doing this back in my club fishing days, going back probably 30 years. We've been rigging them this way. This will be a pretty simple video. This is a fish on tungsten weight. Just very durable. This is one that I've used for a long time. So I'm tying a hook on here. I'm gonna go over a couple things that will definitely help you land more of those tube bites that you get. Got one. Small mouth. Fat little chunk. So I'm tying a Palomar. I've got a three aught. You can use a four aught. And I do sometimes, but I base it mainly not on the, on the size of the tube, but more often the size of the fish that I'm fishing for. So my standard, you know, I live up north, big fish up here is five and a half pounds. And we're looking at two and a half to three and a half pounders. So I'm using a three aught. And the first part of this rig is the hook. This is a VMC offset shank hook. It's got the reverse R bend. There, there's just not a better hook shape on the market. See that reverse R bend holds the tube up really, really nice. It's got a wide bite. The hook point is over the line tie. You can see the difference in height right there. There's a solid, not quite a quarter of an inch, but a good gap between this line and this line. So these two horizontal lines, you'll see this one's higher. And that's a key. Um, the other thing is that wide bite for tube fishing and also the bend in that hook. This hook is amazing. So it's almost like you took a pair of pliers and grabbed the hook. This is what a lot of pros do, a lot of tournament fishermen, we've been doing this for years, and you just reef on that hook and it ruins the temper a little bit. So you're taking a real strong hook and making it weaker, but these VMCs come already like that, straight out of the package crucial for any Texas rigging, but especially with the tube. Here's my tube box. Black and blue is always good. And, and truthfully, just a straight green pumpkin with no flake at all is just hard to beat, especially when you don't know what's going on. Green pumpkin works in muddy water, it works in clear water, it just works all the time. Here's key number two. So I want my baits to look pretty when I Texas rig them, and I think we all do. But when you're tube fishing, I think this is the exception. It's not gonna look the best. So I'm going in, and I'm coming right out, right away. Quarter inch at the most. And my goal here is to not go over the line tie. A lot of times we want that knot covered up, you know, just like I said, it looks better. But with the tube, we want the whole tube on that hook. And that enables it to swing, have movement, it's free, and it's going to give you, you know, that tip alone is going to get you more bites. I'm coming straight through, straight through that tube. Hook is totally exposed, and I'm usually pinching a little bit and get that little exposed in there but a lot of times you're fishing it's still it's just sitting right out in the open if you're gonna make a nasty gnarly pitch into something you know I might do that on the fly I might on sand sandy areas or whatever I might just leave it open on purpose but leaving that line tie out is one of the keys all right so when I'm pegging away I use a toothpick good old-fashioned way there goes the toothpick when I'm tube fishing I hardly ever peg my way and that is the second tip that is really going to help you. Between this hook, rigging the tube where you can see the eye of your hook, and not pegging that sinker, that is without a doubt going to catch you 90% of the fish that bite your tube as opposed to 50%. That's a big one. Man, 
this one. So crazy. <laughs> Look at that. Right in the top of the head, every single time. All those fish. Pretty, huh? When these tubes get all beat up, I can keep using this thing for quite a while. So I've got, you can see it's totally split. A lot of guys would just throw that and you know, throw that on their deck and be done with it. I just take and hook it right through the middle like that and then slide it up. Cause all you need it to do is stay up there on that hook and just like that. And you're ready to fish again. So you can get a few more bites out of one tube. Got one. And not a giant. <laughs> Little guy. One other thing, I'm gonna shorten the tentacles on this tube. So I'm gonna, I'm pinching off, you know, probably a half inch. And you can see I shortened it up and it gives it even a fatter appearance. It just looks like a fatter bait now. But that helps with your hookup percentage too. You want that fish to get that whole bait in their, in their mouth. It seems like the more tore up your tube is, the better it works. One more thing, and I do this with my Senkos. I do it with a lot of soft plastics. And this is just something, a lot of these salted type baits, a lot of Yamamoto baits, I'll roll it up in my hands and just pull that salt out, make it look beat up. It gives it a little bit of a lighter color, which I like a lot. And that's just a little bonus tip. Every little thing plays its part. So there we go, ready to fish. Got one. That's a nice one there, big one. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a large mouth. Look at this one. Big one. I mean like a gigantic one. Look at him stuck right through the head. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Come over here. Yeah. Look at that, buddy. That's a six pounder. <laughs> Look at that hook right through the head where he's supposed to be. It's not a, a fish story. Bill. I had this bite, I lost it. It was a six pounder, I swear. But anyway, look at that. 